everyone, and welcome to The Wrap, brought to you by Michigan Medicine Headlines. I'm Dan Elman with the Department of Communication. And I'm Jeremy Phyllis, also with the Department of Communication. Today, we're going to highlight a new feature on Headlines, the people of Michigan Medicine, which helps you get to know your colleagues in a more personal and human way. Now, before we get into that, be sure you get to know everything that's happening at Michigan Medicine by catching up on any episode of The Wrap you may have missed. You can find the shows on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or any other podcast hosting platform. New episodes can also be found on the Michigan Medicine YouTube channel and as part of the headlines, we can review. Okay, on that note, let's bring in Lizelle Salazar. Lizelle is the project manager for the outreach and education programs at the Eisenberg Family Depression Center and the subject of the first installment of the People of Michigan Medicine. Lizelle, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Now, your personal journey to your current position at the Eisenberg Family Depression Center is pretty special. Can you explain sort of how you got there and what draws you to work with the programs that you do? Yeah, uh, not sure how far back you want me to go, but for me, um, I was very much on the pre-med track um, in college, and uh, I after college, I did an AmeriCorps program called City Year Detroit, where I was tutoring and mentoring kids in Detroit public schools. And then um, while I was applying to med school, I just noticed that health really impacts academics. And there was so much that happened outside of a doctor's office that doctors have no control over um, and started to question why I was becoming a doctor. Um, so I ended up uh, pursuing public health after that and getting into public health and really interested in how School plays a role in um, academics and uh, education and health. And that really led me to being interested in this position with the Depression Center after my public health um, master's program. And I fell in love with the program called Peer to Peer, which educates middle and high school youth about depression, anxiety and other um, mental illnesses and supports them as they create a public health awareness campaign for their school aimed to reduce stigma around mental health, increase awareness around it and increase help seeking. Um, and really just seeing how mental health plays a role in everybody's life, but especially with academics really makes me passionate about this and seeing the passion that the students have to help each other really just drives me in my work. Thanks for sharing that. In, in, in the outside of work, you know, the, the people of Michigan Medicine piece is really kind of focusing on on what people like to do or what they are outside of uh, the office. And you mentioned reconnecting with your Filipino heritage. What was it like to grow up in a Filipino family and finally be able being able to visit the Philippines later in your life? Yeah, growing up, um, I didn't really have many people that are Filipino around me. Um, so I mainly just had like my Filipino family and that's where most of my cultural um, upbringing kind of came from. And uh, actually going to the Philippines was just such a life-changing experience for me. So the first time I went was in 1997. So I was just seven years old when I first went, but getting to actually see the places that my parents grew up and experience the food that my parents grew up with and different fruits that are special to the Philippines um, and just seeing the kindness of the people and uh, everything was just really an awakening for me um, since I didn't get to experience that um, in the U.S. growing up and it was just really special going back to the Philippines. And I think it was really special for my family as well. Um, I think my parents, they kind of didn't share too much about the Philippines before that. Um, and then actually going to the Philippines with them, I think that really opened themselves up to uh, speaking about like, oh, this is where we used to um, eat this is like where like my grandma had like a farm and like this is where I went to school and then so I actually got to learn a lot about my parents as well through that first trip and ongoing those conversations just happened a lot more. That sounds amazing so what would you say now is sort of your favorite part a about that experience and then b about Filipino culture in general is it the food the language the people just the land that you were able to see out in the Philippines what did, what really has stood out to you? 
Yeah, I think uh, my favorite thing about Filipino culture is just the community aspect. Um, so I think um, I'm very close to my extended family and I love how in Filipino culture, um, everyone's kind of part of your family. So we refer to anyone that's part of like our parents' generation as like titas and titos, which means like aunts and uncles when you translate it. And then we refer to anyone that's in our grandparents' generation as lolas and lolos. So everyone is your family. Everyone likes to help each other. It's just a very collaborative um, community feel, which I think is so special. You mentioned, uh... Uh, you know, in, offline with us that, you know, since the story was published that there was a lot of positive feedback from the Michigan medicine community and from some of the folks within your own family. Can you share some of those notes and messages and what they mean to you? Yeah, um, I got a lot of great feedback um, and uh, it was just surprising how many people ended up seeing it. I wasn't expecting that. Um, and then so the first message I got was actually from my best friend who is a physician at Michigan, Michigan Medicine. And he was like, oh, like, look who popped up in my inbox this morning. And then um, it was really sweet. He sent it to like our group thread. And then he also um, sent it to his family, um, who I'm really close to. And then his family messaged me and was like, oh, we're so proud of you. Um, so that was really nice. I also heard from old colleagues from like Wolverine Wellness that I worked with in public health school and also people I worked out with at Barcode Ann Arbor. They messaged me and they're like, hey, it's nice to see you pop up in my inbox. Hope you're doing well. Um, but I think like the thing that was like most special was the feedback from my mom. Um, so I shared it with my own family. And then so I'm just going to pull it up here. My mom, um, everyone from my family was very supportive. And then my mom said that it has always been our wish that our children will learn the Filipino culture and traditions and to see both my kids, grandkids and their spouses embracing it is a very fulfilling as a Filipino parent. We are so proud of you guys. Great article, Lizelle. So that was truly very special for me. Um, in Filipino culture, you don't hear your parents saying that they're very proud of you too. Um, so for my mom to actually say that out loud, even though I felt that pride from her um, was really special as well. So thank you for the opportunity um, to have those social, special moments as well. Yeah, I think that's amazing. The power of the written word, right? And sort of, yeah. you know, you see it in writing and it just elicits emotions out of everyone. And I think that's great. And the power of headlines and how we can get the the word out. So thank you for being willing to share your story, obviously, to kick off a new series for us. Now, you talked about special moments, and I think uh, you're going to be creating some special moments later in the year. You're planning to take your husband and your son to the Philippines. So what are you planning to do out there? Are you excited? Are you nervous? Uh, you know, how are you feeling about that trip? I have a whole range of emotions when it comes to it. And uh, I know it still seems far away, but um, it's coming up. So we're going over the holiday season um, uh, to the Philippines, um, which is going to be really special because Filipinos know how to do Christmas very well. Um, so they start putting up decorations in September um, and then decorations stay on until like mid January. So um, I think it'll be uh, really special because I didn't get to experience this since 1997, the first time I went to the Philippines. And then this time I get to share it with my spouse and also uh, my kid who will be two and a half. And then we actually have a bunch of our extended family going. It's actually going to be a trip of 20 total people that are all family. So um, hoping that we also get that support from our family to take care of our two and a half year old um, during the trip. But we're planning to go um, visit where my parents are from, also visit um, some of the more resort areas of the Philippines um, and get some time to relax. And I always enjoy shopping in the Philippines too. Um, and 
bargaining uh, when I shop is something of a technique of mine that I specialize in that I can't do in America. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, but also just nervous how it's going to go with a kid because anyone that has a toddler know that it's unpredictable sometimes, <laughs> but he's been a good traveler so far. That's wonderful. And, and hopefully you'll be able to use your newfound language skills that you earned learned over the pandemic to, to haggle a little bit better, right? Yeah, I, I'm still going to come off as American, so <laughs> I don't know if it's better if I speak Tagalog and try to haggle or if I'm just speaking in English, um, since most people in the Philippines know how to speak English as well, um, but we'll see. All right, well, thank you so much, Lizelle, for sharing your story today, and obviously we already thanked you for sharing your story to help kick off people in Michigan Medicine Series. Uh, if you want to read more about Lizelle, please go to mmheadlines.org. That's mmheadlines.org. We also shared the story on the employees of Facebook, uh, employees at Michigan Medicine Facebook page, if you'd like to read it there. All right, Lizelle, we've already learned a lot about you, but it's time to learn even more during the lightning round when we ask our guests four quick five questions. So you ready to go? Yeah. All right. So football season is about to kick off. Are you into football at all? And if so, who is your favorite team? Oh, uh, this is a tough one to say on a Michigan Medicine podcast, um, but I am a Spartan at heart, um, so Michigan State is my um, team of choice. I will watch some Michigan football, but especially when it comes to that rivalry game, I am not rooting for the maize and blue at all. <laughs> I think that's fair. As long as you didn't say Ohio State, I think it's it's safe. <laughs> Um, all right. Earlier this week, a new head of the wellness office was named here. What's one way that you make sure you're doing what you can to avoid burnout? Um, definitely for me, uh, making sure that I exercise at least three times a week. So um, definitely I, I still go to bar classes and um, that's where I met some of the people who reach out to me from Michigan Madison, which is really sweet. But I now go to a studio that's a little bit closer to home. Um, but that and sleep, which is hard to do sometimes. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Uh, so coming up on Saturday is National hot, uh, Dog Day. I almost said Hot Dog Day, but it's National Dog Day. <laughs> Are you a dog person? And if so, do you have a four-legged friend or any type of four-legged friend running around now? I am a dog person, even though I'm actually allergic to dogs slightly. Um, so I don't have... A, real four-legged friend at home but we do have um it used to be my big stuffed animal that uh my husband gave me but it actually got passed on to my son and his name is woof woof, woof, woof. i love it that's great all right school is starting back up around the region what was your favorite school subject when you were growing up <laughs> the first thing that popped in my head is my least favorite school subject because this gets mentioned a lot is was social studies and this gets mentioned a lot in our home because my husband is a social studies teacher so he tests his lesson plans on me who is usually was not very engaged um, in social studies but I would say that my favorite probably was like psychology actually. Um, looking back, uh, I took AP psychology in high school and that was probably one of my favorite classes. Lizelle, thanks again for joining us today. If you wanna learn more about Lizelle's journey to Michigan medicine and the revisiting of her Filipino culture, go to mmheadlines.org, mmheadlines.org. All right, and while you're there, you could check out other, week, other featured stories from this week. We already mentioned the announcement about our new chief wellness officer. But there was also a rundown of new regional health system leaders, and insight into how artificial intelligence is improving the care delivered in our operating rooms. Find all that and much more at mmheadlines.org. Okay, Dan, Lizelle shared some unique insight into her life to kick off the People of Michigan Medicine series. What's one thing about you that most people at Michigan Medicine don't know about you? Boy, that's a good that's a good question. I feel like I share a lot of information on this podcast, so I'm not sure. And I know everyone at Michigan Medicine listens to the podcast, so it's sort of hard to say. Um, but I have, you know, told people a lot. You know, I, I love sports. That's one of my biggest hobbies. But I'm not sure many people know that actually, for a time, I was a uh, minor league baseball play-by-play -play announcer back in Rockford, Illinois. Um, so I did a season there with the Rockford Riverhawks of the Independent Frontier League. They don't exist anymore. 
Um, but you know, bad, that's showing my age. The teams don't exist anymore. Um, but I definitely did some play by play broadcasting and that, that was awesome. What about you? I, I was trying to think we, we share so many things on the podcast and again, trying to figure out things that people don't know about, uh, about me, but I would say that, you know, some people knew that I ran when I was you know in high school and college, but they might not know that I was decent at it, you know, not that's world class surprise. by any means, but. But I mean, I, I did run a 420 mile one time and that was pretty cool. So um, I guess that's kind of good. So that would be the thing I, I could share. That's awesome. All right, it's time for the weekly trivia contest. This week's question is, who was named the new president of the regional health system overseeing Sparrow Health System and U of M Health West? Once again, who was named the new president of the regional health system overseeing Sparrow and U of M Health West? You can find the answer in this week's headline story, and once you know it, send it to headlines at med.umich.edu for the chance to win a prize. And also, please use that email box if you want to be featured in a future edition of the People of Michigan Medicine series. We'd love to hear your story of how you got to Michigan Medicine, why you do what you do, or just something really cool about your life. That's all we have for today, Lizelle. Thank you for joining us. And thanks as always to all our listeners and viewers for everything you do for our patients, families, and each other. We'll see you next week.